Hello everyone and welcome to the Car Code YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Sam. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more new car reviews and car content every single week. Today I'm at Volkswagen UK and I'm going to be checking out the facelifted Volkswagen T-Cross. This one today is finished in the flagship rubber ducky yellow colour. It looks really cool and this is the R-Line model. I'm going to be going through all the specifications, trims, etc. If that sounds good, keep watching to the end for a full overview on the Volkswagen T-Cross facelift. Lift. I'm very excited about this video. Let's talk trims available on the updated T-Cross. You've got now Life, which is the standard specification, just under £24,000. You've got Match, which is £24,150, and that is such a good bargain, really, compared to Life. It gives you rear camera, rear tinted windows, keyless entry and start, and you get your standard colours, so that's excellent. That's the Match model. Then it goes to Style, which is over £27,000. That's more comfort and style orientated. Then it goes to this R-Line, which is just over £28,500. So it does get quite pricey, but it's always been that way. The flagship cars are the Style and this R-Line model. The Style is kind of the top spec, even though it's cheaper than the R-Line. The R-Line is a sportier looking car. Okay, so the exciting specification, like the R-Line, which has the sportiness, and the Style may be exciting and look fresh, but let's go through the standard specification, everything that comes as standard on the T-Cross. LED headlamps, front and rear parking sensors, an adjustable armrest, which you can adjust for height and also length, heated, electronically adjustable and electronically folding door mirrors, quack, sorry, and this rubber ducky yellow exterior colour. Even though it's not metallic, you'll look at it and it's unmissable. I really love the look of this car. I would pick this one in a heartbeat. The standard colours are Rubber Ducky Yellow and Ascot Grey. Ascot Grey is standard on the other models. As is Rubber Ducky Yellow, you can choose which one you want, apart from on R-Line where you can't get Ascot Grey. This is the colour for the R-Line. Now, your metallic paintwork options do get quite pricey, £675, including the new clear blue metallic paintwork. This is the new clear blue metallic £675 option. It's really nice. It's a nice light sky blue colour and just a bit different. I really love bright colours, so this is great. It's a style model. It's got like the chrome around there, which just looks a bit better, and the light in there as well for your daytime wind lights. Rubber ducky yellow is new, as is the clear blue which does suit the car, it does look really nice. You can get King's Red Metallic for £860, but I'm not a huge fan of that. Some people do like that colour, but this new colour and the clear blue look excellent, and just all the different design elements, such as new wheels, new interiors, all just make it feel that much fresher, so I'll go through all of that with you. Of course, there is still the Volkswagen Tiger, which is the coupe SUV-like version of the T-Cross, and that currently starts at around £2,000 more than a T-Cross. Definitely something worth looking at. I'm a huge fan of the Tiger. Clear, crisp lines. It's very reminiscent of the second generation Tiguan with the sharp creases and lines. So it does look very stylish. And you can see parting it to the previous shape Tiguan, what I mean about the lines being really tight creases and very sharp looking lines, which is a lot of people love that. I like the slight curviness of the new Tiguan and also the slight curviness that you get on the T-Rock and Tigo too. Maybe you don't like the round curves and the out there look of cars like the Ford Puma and the Nissan Duke. Personally, I really do like those, but if you want something a bit more classic, then the T-Cross is a great option. To the rear of the T-Cross, you have a slightly tweaked design, so the lower bumpers are a little bit different, and this light bar is a bit different too. This used to just be a reflector here, but the lights do extend a little bit more now than they used to, so that's quite a good improvement. Again, it has those polo type of vibes. So you can see the hazards at the back slash indicators are really decent really great when we've seen a lot of manufacturers put tiny little indicator bulbs in this is very clear you'll know exactly where someone's going the style ones are even better with the sequential style indicators the iq lights do have a different look they kind of have x's and they're a 3d effect they remind me quite a lot of jeep and what dacia have been doing recently I think these probably look more Volkswagen-like than the IQ lighting on the back. With the IQ lights, this does have the full light tail bar, but I just think it doesn't have quite the pizzazz that the Tiger and the T-Rock have got. 
Let's move on to alloys on the T-Cross. Alloys range from 16 to 18 inches as before on the Volkswagen T-Cross. So you've got a really good range of wheels. We don't get steelies in the UK, we get alloys as standard. It starts with these 16 inch Nottingham alloy wheels. They are standard on the Life model. On Mac, it goes to these 17 inch Clayton alloy wheels, which are a nice silver wheel. They are also available on the Volkswagen Tiggo. I do quite like them. You can upgrade the wheels as well on the match model to the 17 inch Alexandria alloy wheels. And then going up to style, you get the 17 inch Alexandria alloy wheels as standard. You can also have the 18 inch Colm alloy wheels in two different colors, in gray or in black. All of these different wheels cost different prices on each model. It does depend the gray or the black, depending on what exterior color you get and what interior color you get. So just have a look on the configurator and have a look at those different options. You can also get the 18 inch Funchal alloy wheels on there. They are again offered on the Tygo, but they're in silver on the T-Cross instead of the gray, which I really like on the Tygo. And then on the R-Line, you have two options of alloy wheels. These are the 17 inch Valencia alloy wheels in Galvano Grey. I really like these. I think this is the sweet spot for the car. The 17s are great for your comfort. You've got a really chunky sidewall, but they actually do fill out the car quite well. 18 inches, I have driven them before. And on the Tiger review, I know it was like two years ago now, the 18 inch wheels, they were the 18 inch Misano alloy wheels, which you can get they are a bit firmer. So 17s is perfect for this car, which is available on the match. The match specification is excellent because it gives you the keyless entry, the rear tinted windows, wheels, and paintwork. It makes so much sense financially. If you configure it, it works out cheaper, but you get more stuff. These are stunning wheels. I really like them. I actually didn't like these wheels when they first came out, but they've grown on me massively now. And I really like them, especially on the lighter colored vehicles. They really work well with white cars, silver, the blue, and this rubber ducky yellow. They look really nice. They're just a sporty feel. To the front of the T-Cross, you get LED headlights as standard. These are the standard units that you get on Life, Match, and R-Line. It is funny how they've always done that, but the sporty R-Line always is a similar price and style, which has more spec, but the R-Line is more sporty. So this is where your LED daytime running lights are. The IQ lighting is standard on the style specification. So that gives you the light that goes all the way through. It gives you the matrix LEDs, which are really clever, turn corners, all sorts of stuff. And it gives you daytime running lights here on these plastic bits. These on the R-Line match and life are just a bit redundant, really. You've got your parking sensor there. It does work with the styling, but it is not the most attractive. Whereas when it's got a light feature, it just makes a bit more sense, which is on the style model. You can opt for the IQ lights on our line. It's £1,140 optional extra. It gives you the front LEDs and also the rear LEDs. Very clever lighting technology. It is really cool. Of course, I think these are absolutely fine. They do the job. The IQ lights do look that bit extra than the standard ones, but I honestly would probably just live with these. I do like the IQ lighting though, but it's over a thousand pounds, so not sure. I would probably pick the style specification, even though I love these Valencia wheels. And oh, even though I love the Valencia wheels, I do really like the style interiors more than the art line. Let's have a look inside the updated T-Cross now and see what's changed. Inside, the T-Cross has been made to feel more like its bigger siblings, the Tygo and the T-Rock, with more quality materials around the cabin. A lot of the things are the same. It's a facelift after all, so it's not a brand new model. You've still got these touch sensitive climate controls, which are very easy to use actually. Lots of people would complain about them, but they're easy enough to use. You literally just slide very quickly. They're all very responsive as well to touch. Don't have an issue with them. And you've got heated seats. Heated seats are £345 optional extra. You have the 8-inch centre infotainment screen up here. This is something I didn't like on the old T-Cross, the way it was facing away from the driver. And it still has that feel. However, it doesn't feel as pronounced as it was because it used to be encased in a little thing. It is better now. However, it definitely is still facing away from me, which is a little bit of a bugbear of mine. I'm not a huge fan of that but it's not uncommon in the small SUV segment. The Ford Puma has the exact same issue. You do have your center digital dials on this R-Line model, which is nice. As this is the R-Line, you do get the Digital Cockpit Pro as standard, which is a 10.25 inch digital dials. They look great. On other models, we get smaller eight inch ones, which 
doesn't make a massive difference but i do like these they look very smart however this is the discover nav which has the built-in navigation which is definitely a good thing to have on life and match it's not standard it's a 600 pound option so if you do like to have built-in navigation which is handy to have then this is the one that you've got to go for down on style and our line you can get the discover nav pro as well which gives you a nine inch center infotainment screen but it gets rid of the volume buttons and this zoom button here so it's not as user friendly it includes streaming and internet and that's more expensive it's 965 pounds and you have to even pay that on our line or style so it's not really worth it this is a good one you get apple carplay and android auto as standard anyway which is fine if you want a rear camera it's 315 pound optional extra on all models bar the match which it comes on as standard again you got front and rear sensors it's not a really needed feature four different interior trim slash cloths to choose from inside your t-cross on the life and on the match you get the melange cloth so that's like a navy blue kind of a crisscross pattern they do look better than the standard seats that are available in the taigo which are straight out of the polo life which are not very supportive so they look a lot better on this style you've got two different options of interior ambiance slash seats so you've got the cosmic blue and you've got the mistral gray i really like the mistral gray i like the cosmic blue as well add something new to the car like with the t-rock facelift that came in 2020 22 that added the different interiors on the style model that's the same so you can opt for each interior you want some of them depend on which exterior color you have you can't opt for the blue on every exterior color and you can't opt for the light interior as well on every exterior color this r line gets this gray they just call it gray r line cloth with the art velours inserts and then the leather very comfortable seats adjustable lumbar support which is great yeah, they're very supportive, nice, and I do like these a lot. They have much better bases, I find, than the Ford seats or in a Honda, so that's good. They're not the most sporty seats, but I do like them. You can't opt for a sunroof, though, on this T-Cross. You have a dark headline and no option for sunroof. If you do want a sunroof on your R-Line, you're going to have to go for a T-Rock or a Tygo, and you can get them on the used market for really good prices. So a Tygo and the t-cross i kind of think of the tygo as a t-cross facelift in its own right and then this came along there's some things the tygo does better my opinion the tygo has a better screen set up it's facing towards the driver and it's basically taken straight from the polo so you have the polo dash on the tygo i have to say i do like this more than the tygo this sort of step dash with the stitching i do like that a little bit more you can opt on this car if you want a better sound system. You can opt for Beats Audio, which is a £550 option. Options do get quite expensive. Even on this R-Line model, you've got to opt for keyless entry and start. Rear camera you have to opt for, I don't mind. It's not something I find important, but some people do. On the match specification, rear camera, keyless entry, tinted window is standard. So if you want an affordable option that has pretty much everything you'd need the match is the one to go for however in terms of exterior design i definitely think the style and the r line have got that in the back it's very traditional volkswagen which is really great this does everything you need it to do it's a small suv if you want a more functional car and more affordable the skodas are obviously the ones to go for the seats are more like a fun vibe but then this is fun this it's kind of a good blend of everything i'd say that bump 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 it's very easy to park and the square dimensions actually mean that it's easy to judge the size of it there's not haunches like there is on the puma or on the dukes one thing i thought of is the parking sensors you have them front and rear the tiger has 360 degree sensors which is great this has just got front and rear but then this is shorter and boxier so it's easy to park anyway it's not a problem parking this it's very simple Let's have a little look at the engines offered on the new T-Cross. All engines are turbocharged and it starts with the one litre TSI with 95 PS or 94 brake horsepower. That's mated with a five-speed manual transmission. If you like higher output, you can get the 110 PS 108 brake horsepower one litre TSI engine with a six-speed manual transmission or like this one with a seven-speed DSG automatic transmission. You can also get a 1.5 TSI as you could before exclusively with the seven-speed DSG. So you can't unfortunately get the manual with that. However, if you do want a higher output car, 
you just go to the T-Rock, which isn't a massive amount bigger than this vehicle. The power plants are exactly the same as you'd see on the Volkswagen Tiggo. Really nice that you have the option of the 110 PS with a six-speed manual. You don't have any option of a six-speed manual on the Polo at the moment. That is filling a gap. Really nice, nippy little engines. Five-speed, six-speed manual or seven-speed DSG. You don't have hydraulics, but the bonnet is very light and it was very easy to open. One thing to know is the bonnet catch is actually on the passenger side. They've not swapped it over to the driver's side. Let's take it for a drive. It's the one litre TSI. You can still get the 1.5 with the DSG. I will be test driving the manual version as well at my local dealership, so you'll be able to see that. And this is the T-Cross facelift live. Thanks again to Lancaster Volkswagen for helping me incorporate everything in as well as Volkswagen UK at the event. I've had the DSG experience and now the manual. So I'll give you a full overview of what it's like to drive and everything. This is the five-speed manual, one litre TSI engine with 94 brake horsepower. It doesn't sound like a lot, but for round town, this is really adequate and, you know, not bad at all. I would spend a little bit extra, though, and go for the six-speed manual, 108 brake horsepower, one litre TSI. Just is a little bit of a nicer experience, especially if you do a lot of motorway. You still have the manual handbrake, which it would have been nice to see them put an electronic one. I don't think it would be impossible for them to do that. Going to 34 miles per hour is absolutely fine. The gearbox is very smooth but again something that i've critiqued the one liter tsis in the past of is the engine braking isn't very good moving it down it doesn't slow the car down very much it kind of just coasts along again though like i say engine braking i don't know why it's just not quite there which is a bit odd i have to use the brakes in this quite a bit which you don't have to in the 1.5 engines. This car's a life. I would have got the heated seat spec'd. It's nice that you can actually spec heated seats on a lower spec car. And honestly, you wouldn't want any less power than this. So I'm going 30 now in fourth gear. If I put my foot down, it will ask me to go into third to give me a bit more power. Oh, not there, the turbo kicked in. The turbo is really sweet. It is a sweet engine. I'd get the six-speed manual. I think that is the best one to go for. If you want more power, you've got to go for the 1.5 TSI, which is only automatic, so you can't have a manual with higher than 108 brake horsepower. I'll open the boot for you. Inside the boot, you'll find 385 litres. As this is just a facelift, the boot space remains unchanged. However, if you slide those seats forward, which you can do, you can get over 400 litres of boot space. So that makes it a similar size as a T-Rock or a Tygo. This, however, has that function. Those two cars don't have the slide and seat function. This makes it a very practical small SUV, which is great. Even though the boot space isn't class leading, it is a nice square shape. So it's plenty enough for most people. It's five liters bigger than a Volkswagen Golf to put it into perspective. You've got this false floor as standard. You can also drop the low floor down if you want to get more boot space, or you can have it up so that it's flat for when you put the seats flat. So quite practical all in all. Underneath here, you've got the tire inflation kit. However, you can opt for a space saver spare wheel, which is great that you can do that. This is a smaller SUV, so it is actually quite a practical size boot. Not the biggest in the class, but it is a nice square shape. As before, up here, you've got a perfect space for your warning triangle and handles on each side to shut the boot. It's not the lightest boot, but it's not too heavy. Normally, you will have to shut it like so. Let's have a look at how your rear passengers are gonna fare in the T-Cross. In the back of the T-Cross, the seats are all the way back, so I've got loads of leg room, loads of headroom. The boxy shape means that you do get a lot of headroom, which is really good. And it is a utilitarian sort of vehicle. It looks it on the outside. I actually think with the body line creases, it looks sort of like a mini Tiguan. It is a really nice, strong looking car. The T-Rock and the Tiger have got more flowing lines and a bit more curvy, which I actually prefer, but I can definitely see the appeal of this looking like a chunky, little small boxy SUV. The seats, like I say, they do slide forward. You've got the little bar here. All of them slide together, which, you know, isn't the best, but 
you can't do anything about that and it's good that it's got it anyway i've just slid it forward a little bit and it's absolutely fine unfortunately you can't like recline them from where you sit but they're actually at a very good angle so that's fine you've got little guides for the seat belts and honestly it's quite nice back here you don't have a rear armrest but you don't have that on the Tygo either you don't even have it to split fold down at all so that is a shame. It would have been nice to have a rear armrest, but you don't have it. You just have it in the T-Rock and the Tiguan. The Isofix points look a bit smaller than these two, so that's good. You've got two USB-C ports as well, which is good in the back up here. And you've got pockets on both backs of seats. So overall, it is quite nice to the back of here. Rear passengers will be fine. And the doors open wide enough. They do open quite wide, so it should be easy to get car seats in and out of here. I honestly do see it as quite a practical family vehicle. So then, what do I think about the updated T-Cross? Well, I think it's a really nice facelift and the specifications are really interesting to see, especially the match and style specs. They look really great. I love this new rubber ducky yellow paintwork. It's really fun. There is a few things that I let it down, such as it's still having a manual handbrake so that it's on the Polo and all the other MQBAO cars. So that makes sense. So I would like an electronic handbrake. Also, the screen is still facing away slightly. So the Tygo and T-Rock the siblings of this car do a better job at that. I wasn't a huge fan of the T-Cross before, especially when the Tygo came out because it just trumped it in pretty much every way. But it is much better than it was before. So it is a really lovely car. They do get quite expensive when you add options and things like that on it. But especially if you're looking for an automatic small SUV, this is a great option as the DSG gearbox is a really smooth transmission. The manual's great too. It's a lovely little vehicle. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks to Volkswagen UK as well for having me to look at some of the new models. It's really appreciated. And also thanks to Lancaster Volkswagen. If you like this video, hit subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in my next one.